All right, hello everybody. I'm Alex. I'm here joined with Devis. Uh, he's the principal architect for the Semantic Kernel, and we're here to talk about Azure Cognitive Search and their new vector search capability and how it relates to the Semantic Kernel. So, Devis, do you want to kick us off? Hi everyone. Yeah, my name is Devis. Working in the Semantic Kernel team. Thank you, Alex, for setting this up. Really excited to announce that we have Azure Cognitive Search in Semantic Kernel has been announced yesterday at Inspire. It's a um, great managed service that we have in Azure enabling vector search. As we did support other vector engines like uh, Pinecone, Wingate, Acroma, Quadrant and others, now we also have Azure Cognitive Search and these um, complements other offers like Azure Cosmos DB, Redis and Postgres that we also have in Azure. And it's great because now we have a fully managed service to do vector search and to manage memories in semantic kernel. So you can see published yesterday by Liam and they described the, the vector search now available. You can use it in combination with Azure OpenAI. For example, you can output a collection. Azure Cognitive Search, you know, it has two different ways of uh, principally. You can connect it to your existing tables, your databases in Cosmos DB, SQL Server, and other storage types. Or you can create collections, and in these collections, you can think about them as tables. You can define fields, and for each field, what kind of search you want to do, like full text search and now vector search. And once you start using vector search, it opens uh, the Azure OpenAI integration because now you can store embeddings and you can search embeddings, which is super powerful. You get more precision. You can store text. You don't have to define the language of that text. So you can store text in German, Spanish, Italian, English, whatever, and you can search with other languages. If the comparison is done semantically using, you can use precise similarity, you can use dot product, you can use Euclidean different distance. So it's super powerful, great, and you get great results when it comes, when it comes to finding relevant information. And this service in particular is designed to be fast. We saw this from day one when we started working on integration. Creating an index is a matter of a few milliseconds. You can create indexes on the fly. You can make changes. You can insert, retrieve, and all that is very, very fast. And it also has a free offer. You can use it for free to test and develop uh, locally, which is great. And then it has many different price queues that goes from about $70 per month and up, depending on how many indexes you want to create. Of course, uh, it's not just about indexes. You can also do physical search. You can create new more fields into your collections. You can filter the data also using the classic search. So now you have these powerful side-by-side -side vector search and classic search, and you can use both, which is probably the best of the, the two worlds coming together. Yeah, I think a key thing to emphasize, uh, as you said, is that this is one of several memory stores that are available That's inside right. the semantic kernel. It is the primary first party offering from Microsoft and is part of the overall copilot stack that Microsoft announced at build. So if you want semantic kernel to be our AI orchestrator and you want to be fully in the Azure ecosystem, you know, Azure cognitive search is a, is a good choice for that. That's right. Uh, you know, it is available uh, worldwide, so you can also think about latency, replicas, and if you if your app is uh, designed, it really requires a lot of responsiveness. You don't have to worry about that. So this response time is very low, so you get great response time. Your data is replicated. You have backups, and then all the goodness of Azure Identity, Azure Core SDKs. You can authenticate with API keys. You can use Azure managed identities, service principles, and all the all and all of that. So it's great, and it's uh, they provide the SDK as usual. So the SDK is available in C sharp, Python, Java, JavaScript. And we are leveraging those SDKs, but you can also leverage the SDKs directly. You can call the REST API. Uh, so plenty of options. There is a great documentation online. I would really suggest you go through it. Take a, take a look at the videos. So you can, now you have two options. You can go fully into Azure Community Search and use it, or we try to make it easier. Even if it is already easy, make it even easier through Semantic Kernel. 
it was just I want to write data and I want to read the information back. And so we we have that approach with semantic kernel. Well, this is all really great, Devis. Uh, I think our listeners and watchers would love to, to see this in action. Can we of get course. a quick demo? Yeah, so here I created a few uh, notebooks using the polyglot extension in VS Code. You can see I have six tabs open. I have the same scenario replicated in C Sharp and Python. So I'm going to show you how it works in C Sharp, semantic kernel in C Sharp, and I will show you the, exactly the same code in Python. You get the same features, same behavior, same, same results. So the first thing I'm doing here, I have some secrets in a .m file. So I'm just um, loading a new get and loading those secrets. Uh, it takes a second. There it is. So you, there won't be any secrets on the screen. And I'm installing the latest uh, NuGet version, NuGet packages of Semantic Kernel. As you might know, we have the current Semantic Kernel is split in multiple packages. We have a package for the core, and then you can choose the other packages. For example, we have one specific for Azure Cognitive Search. Uh, we just launched it yesterday or two days ago. This is the version, and uh, we keep we will keep updating it. So you might see improvements and bug fixes coming over time. And here is the default way of setting up the kernel. You, we use the kernel builder. We say uh, with memory storage. So you can see I'm using Azure Search Memory Store. It takes two parameters. Uh, in this case, I'm using the API key authentication, but you can also use Azure Identity, the managed key, managed identities, and all that if you like. And of course, since we are going to store embeddings. I need to tell the kernel how to calculate those embeddings. So the way it works is the kernel, given some text, will generate the embeddings for you and will save the embeddings into Azure Search. So you don't have to do all that work. And let's run the code. And so you can see we installed the NuGet. That is, the kernel is ready to be, to be used. And here I'm writing some information. Before doing that, let me show you um this is my testbed i have an instance of the search service there it is i'm using the free SKU, and you can click on indexes you can see the list is empty so now i'm going to run that code i'm going to write five memories about a fake person the person name is andrea they work as a tour guide and other facts so I'm going to save that information. So you can, it's very easy. You can say memory dot save information. You provide a collection name and a key and a value. It's important to have the key so you can update record. And the other thing we usually recommend to split data by users so that you have correct security. You know, you don't mix data when you have user one logged in. You don't need to show data about user two, and it also scales pretty well. There are other approaches. You could have tags in your records, but then you have to be more careful about how you create that data. So as you can see, there is no create index. Everything is happening for free. So the kernel takes care of checking if the collection exists. If it doesn't, it will create one. And showing now you back to this page, you will see there is a new collection or a new index. Uh, so that's the terminology used with Azure Search. And here you can use the portal to create the data. And as you can see, there is some information. So all my records have been written. And this is the embedding generated by OpenAI. And since we're using ADA, it is uh, about 1,500 uh, floating numbers. And you can see here, that's the end of the, the first embedding and the text. So you can choose to save the text or not. In this example, I'm saving both embedding and information. And you can query from here, but this is just um, just I would say a way to verify if everything is in order. You can also do other things like you can look at the fields. Uh, this is the default schema that we use in Semantic Kernel, and you can see there is an embedding field, which is a collection of floating numbers. This is where this is the field where we use the new vector search. So this is the notebook one. The information I saved is persistent in the Azure Search. I'm going to show you now notebook number two. So we repeat the same steps. Uh, we load the kernel, nothing changed. Now I'm going to search that information. Uh, for example, given that I saved 
my name or the name of this person, I'm going to ask, what is my name? Now, the important part here, we are not running a prompt. We're using vector search. So the way it works, we semantic kernel is going to extract the embedding of this string, and it will compare that embedding with the embeddings in the storage using cosine similarity. So the when we run this, and I'm asking to get two results to show you that you get more results and they are sorted by relevance. There it is. You see, the, using cosine similarity, the closest string to this, the closest match is this one, and it has a relevance of 0 0.82. This is a cosine similarity value. And of course, you get more, you could get more and more and less relevant and less relevant. Uh, but it is a good way to do search. Of course, the results is um, the the quality of the results really depends on the search the query string. But it is a good start um, to search your data to bring out information that might be relevant for your prompts that we are going to see in the next one in the next notebook. Here, another question: What do I do for work? So the memory that I have is um, I currently work as a tour guide. So again, I run the query, it will return two responses. I current, this is the original text in the storage. This is the relevance calculated with percent similarity. But you see, it finds other information which might not be relevant. You always have to be ready for that. So this is the search. And so if you're building a search engine, you see very simple. You can read and write, just save information, and you can search. Now, since we're talking about semantic kernel and functions and prompt engineering, this is where this comes together in a very, very powerful way. So here I'm setting up the kernel with, uh, I'm including also 3.5 Turbo because I'm going to run a prompt. And this is my prompt. So I'm going to create a prompt which can be contextualized to a different person. For example, considering this fact, about me, and this is going to be injected from memory. So this recall function comes from the text memory scale. So if you load this scale into your memory, into your kernel, now in your prompts, you can use the recall function and you can run a search. And these snippet of uh, these curly braces will be replaced with the text coming back from the from the vector search, from Azure Cognitive Search, the first result, ignoring the others. So now, this function has doesn't know which collection we're going to use yet, uh, which is part of the context. So at this point, we have a function ready to use. When I call it, I'm going to say run it on this collection. And here's where you could run the function across multiple users and get different results. And to give you an idea of what is going on here, so I'm going also to inject a question. And I want an, a concise answer and an explanation for that answer. And as an example, I'm asking, do I live in the same town where I grew up? Now, in order to answer this, it will use these two information. And if I run it, so run everything, you will see it will provide an answer and explanation. No, you do not live in the same town. You mentioned that your family is from New York and you've been living in Seattle. Now, maybe if I point it to another user, I will get a different result. So that's a great way to ground your prompts. And uh, that is a very well-known pattern with RAG um, where you can inject relevant information into your prompts to get good answers. And sometimes you can make it even better. That's something we're working on, including citations to the original information, like I use these documents and all of that. That's very great. Yeah, I mean, I think as you mentioned, this is part of a established pattern for solving large language model application problems. And it's great to see that we have this uh, support in semantic kernel with Azure Cognitive Search and in C Sharp. But I also see that we also have this in Python as well. Yep. And, you know, Python is concise and beautiful, but I think we did a great work with C Sharp too. It's not too verbose. But to show you it side by side, so this is the equivalent Python code where we load the Py package, we prepare the kernel, say we're adding the embedding generation, we're using Ada, some environment variables with our secrets, we're adding a chat service, we are registering the memory, in this case, our search memory, 
In Python, we might have slightly differences. For example, we provide the size of the vectors when we instantiate the memory store. So depending on the vector uh, model that you use, you may need to know the size. Uh, we probably we've, we've improved this, so you don't need to know we will calculate it on the fly, like we do in C sharp. But you can see very, very simple. You can save information. The syntax is like the same. So you can move from C sharp to Python and back. Um, leveraging your the knowledge about the semantic kernel, you provide the, the collection name. Here you see I'm using a different collection. There is a key and a value. Uh, when it comes to search, it's the same thing. So let's put a screen here. You create a kernel. This is how we search. Search a sync, search a sync, collection name, query and limit. And you have the text and the relevance. And same for grounding is very, very easy. You can create your prompting line. You can also put prompts in a file if you like. The syntax is exactly the same. So our prompts do not change between C Sharp and Python. We're also working on the Java. So you can port prompt prompts from language to language. But even the kernel syntax is very similar. You can see create semantic function. You choose how many tokens. There are other parameters like the temperature and so forth. And this is how you run it. So you call the function, providing some input string and some context. And it is very, very simple. So just to wrap up or summarize, right? we showed how you could use the new vector search capabilities of Azure Cognitive Search inside the semantic kernel. Uh, super simple to do. It follows the same patterns as the other memory stores that we have available inside SK. And yeah, as mentioned, this is part of the overall Copilot stack that we at Microsoft are encouraging developers to to adopt and or consider as they're building their own co-pilots and, and applications. And yeah, Devis, any last words for the community on in terms of what they can do with, with memory? Well, I think memory is probably the one of the two critical pieces of AI. So you everyone will want to put all their data available to AI in a secure way. Like I have terabytes of information on my disk array at home, and I wish I could search that within milliseconds. I, I can't. Like I, whenever I look for some information, it takes hours. AI will enable, like, upload all your files and ground your questions and your tasks. So you might see a lot of work happening in the community with uh, planners and agents, and these uh, components, they need context to run properly to give great results. Like if you're asking AI to take a particular action, AI will perform better if you provide context and memory. So this is a critical building block together. Uh, we're working on more things to make it even easier so that you will be working on a service that uh, you can put that service on top of any vector search. We will use Azure Cognitive Search as a start because it's managed, so you don't have to worry about virtual machines and all that. And uploading your files will be easy, uploading presentations, uploading chats, and then we will have experiences like Copilot Chat uh, where you can ask uh, any question about your documents. You can talk about your documents, and so it's going to I think over the next year, memory is going to be super, super important and to, to ground operations, to have responsible AI, um, like secure, but not just secure, but also um, correct. So I think it's, when we talk about correctness with AI, it's a very hard problem. We have this problem with hallucinations. Maybe we could have a session where we talk about that. And one, well, probably the best suggestion when it comes to hallucinations and AI is to ground your prompts with the right memory. So this is really, really important. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon coming up soon. So yep. we'll definitely have to do this another time to talk more about it. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Please take a look. We love feedback. We love pull requests. And uh, if you find anything, we can reach out to us on GitHub, on Discord. And we also have a community meeting every week, right? So maybe we will talk about memory over there too. Well, thank you again, Davis, and take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.